Hi students, um, we are back today with another video um, looking at the grammar of modals. We looked at modals of necessity in grammar video number three. Today we're looking at modals of advice in this next grammar video. So when we talked about modals of necessity, we talked about things like must, have to, need to, and had better. Today we are talking about three modals of advice, um, and we'll get into those in just a minute. So when we talk about modals, remember that the modal is that little piece coming before the main verb. Things like should, would, could, might, must. Sometimes we refer to these as auxiliary or helping verbs but the most correct term in grammar is to call them a modal, a modal verb. Um, just a quick note here about our word of advice. We have the word advise, and you hear the sound of Z when I say advise as a verb. He advised me. He advised me about what job I should get. And then when I use as a noun, the sound changes, and you hear the sound of S. Advice, advice, advise, advice. Um, and I've talked with a few students about there's a whole group of words in English that have a noun form and a verb form. And when you change between the noun and the verb form, um, the pronunciation changes. And it's on my list of ideas for videos in the future. So just a quick note about these words, advise and advice before we jump into these modals. So remember when we talk about modals, they should fall into this very general pattern of location um, where we have a subject followed by a modal, followed by an unchanged verb. Um, because we are using the modal, this verb of go will not change, even if my subject becomes he, she, we, or they. So think about putting into this position the modal, the auxiliary, the helping verb, but here let's think about them as a modal verb. For example, I should go. I should go. I had better go. I had better go. And then the new one for most of us today is going to be ought to. I ought to go. I ought to go. All three of these have a very similar meaning of good advice, good idea, um, different from must, although I would, I would um, continue to tell you that had better feels stronger than should or ought to. It feels closer to um, necessity, which is why we included it in that discussion of necessity in video number three, grammar video number three. Um, however, a grammar book will tell you that had better is closer to should. All three of these going into this position of subject, modal, infinitive verb, or unchanged verb. When we think about should, remember that should can be used for the present, right now, and should can be used for the future. It can also be put into the past, but then we're changing it using the perfect tense. So don't think about it in the past quite yet. I should go. Again, this pattern of subject, should, verb. Um, a few more examples. She should get a job. A good idea, good advice. The students should study every day. My husband should always cook. Good advice, good idea for the future, or for right now. When we think about had better, Again, it looks like a past tense, but it's being used for the present or the future. Um, some textbooks do describe this as a form of advice. In my English cultural heart, I do feel like had better is stronger than advice. It feels more like a must or a need to, um, but we're including it here because a lot of grammar textbooks will include it with advice. Again, the same pattern of subject, had better, and verb. And it's not changing for I, you, he, she, we, they, all of them had better go. 
Um, let's see if this would, she had better get here soon. She had better get here soon. It really feels a lot stronger than should. And then he had better get up early. He had better get up early. I'd better help her out. I'd better help her out. They'd better bring their papers. They'd better bring their papers. It had better stop raining soon. It had better stop raining soon. And you hear my really fast reduced pronunciation with it, had, better. It had better. It had better stop. Remember that this is not a past tense form, even though we see had, which I agree absolutely is the past tense of have. For example, my sentence, I had a car. Had is the main verb in the past tense. But with my sentence, I had better get a car. Get is the main verb. Had better is the modal, the helping, the auxiliary piece. And this is present tense right now, saying that I must acquire a car. Our newest one today is this phrase of ought to. Again, we're using this for the present. We're using it for the future. Following that same format of subject, modal, infinitive unchanged verb. I ought to go. I ought to save more money. We ought to work harder. The students ought to share chocolate with the teacher. Ought to is a less common modal. Um, it feels like older, more formal, more along the lines of British English. However, if you will be taking an English examination or um, using English at a university academic level, you ought to know the modal verb ought to. Ought to has a really bad reduced pronunciation. I ought to go. I ought to go. Sounds a lot like oughta go. I oughta. I oughta go. You oughta know better by now. You oughta know better by now. Finishing up with this quick review of modals of advice, remember all of them are following this format of subject, modal, and infinitive unchanged verb. We're putting into this blank space here things like should, had better, and ought to, oughta, you oughta go. Remember that these are being used in the present or in the future. When we want to take these sentences into the past, then we have to think about them with the uh, perfect tense, using them along with the present perfect. Um, and I'll put together a video explaining that more in depth in the future. Leave some sentences down in the comments, practicing using these three different modals for advice. Let me know what you think. Let me know which one is new for you, which one is easy, which one is difficult. I think ought to, ought to be new for most of us. Um, I didn't include question form here, but as always, question form is that subject and first verb flipped. So she ought to go, she ought to go. Ought she to go? Eh, grammatically, but I'm, I'm not loving it. She should go. Should she go? She had better go. Had she better go? Um, let me know in the comments what you think about this video. And also give me some feedback on the microphone. I've tried to do something different with changing the settings so that it's not dropping the sound out like it has done on a few previous videos. Until next time, bye students.